forget to subscribe and share this video hi hi guys welcome to my channel if you're new here please do subscribe uh, follow me on facebook and instagram as well so right behind me you can see pan african community center the newest and the first here in Aotearoa, new zealand who would who would have thought you know we would have such a community center in new zealand but finally we do have one in the year 2022 so let's see how it's like inside and what are the some of the things you can do inside this community center okay stay tuned what's happening here Here, Katina, who is the co founder for Pan African Broadcasting Corporation. So, let Katina tell us what inspired you to start this, you know, organization. Well, uh, it is my love for Africa to start with. Mm -hmm. I'm an African first before anything else. Like, I'm here in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. I always say, You can take me out of Africa, mm -hmm. but you can never take me Africa out of me. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? And uh, what inspired us is because, you know, here in New Zealand, being in the diaspora, they call us other, and that's the most offensive thing, the most insulting thing we could ever be called as an African, because Africa has 54 nations. We are trying to show them, to show others yeah, that Africa is a continent. Yeah. It's not a country, country with 54 nations. Mm -hmm. So the only way we can do that is by actually revealing ourselves and having this center right in the middle of here with the Af uh, Africans and our community too. It means they're gonna see us, they're gonna hear us. That's what inspired me. Thank you so much. I love that idea, Katina. And uh, what are some of the things that Africans can do in this community center? You know, it's new, it's never been there in New Zealand. What activities or what can they come and do here so that they can you know, grow, promote themselves? So the good thing about this, before I answer the question, thank you so much, is uh, this is a center mm. that was initiated by an African, mm. by the people, for the people, wow. by Africans, for Africans. Okay. There is no hidden agendas behind it. So what it means is people can come here to do all those things that they've been aspiring mm. to do, mm. but they were wondering, are we going to be able to do it? Mm. Are we going to be able to bring it? Mm. But we have the center for that. Bring your ideas. Mm. We want to talk retail. There are things that can come from Africa. We wish we could have these produces here in New Zealand. Yeah. We are opening doors for that. We're ready for business. Mm. So say, hey, Bring your stuff here, whether you're from Kenya, you're from Zambia, you're from Zimbabwe, you're yeah. from Tanzania, we want to know what is it that you guys want to bring here. We are liaising with the biosecurity, like the border securities and all that, to yeah. say that how can you make it possible without burning people's stuff when it comes here. Tell us the rules so that we can observe those and bring this stuff here. Yeah. The hair products, you know, that's one of our biggest challenges here for us women, yeah. where every hairdress has their own price and sometimes it's just like one weight. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be encouraging fair trading over yeah. here. You can see the baskets from Ghana, drums, yeah. and yeah. art as well. We want to recognize our own talents here in New Zealand as yeah. well, yeah. like musicians and yeah. whatever else people want to bring here. Yes. And also the languages. Yeah. I'm from Zimbabwe. I'm from I, Kenya. <laughs> I speak about five languages. And I you know speak what? three. There we go. So we want people to be able to say our young people, the youth, they can be reminded of the culture yes. that we grew up, mm. there were no devices. Guess what? We want to come here and remind them of some of the games we grew up yeah. playing yeah. where we can have a night where there's no devices. Yeah. Let's play, I used to call it Nodo, or let's um, learn the language. Yeah. I want to learn Swahili. Yes. But before I can do that, I want to teach my own children to speak Shona and Devele in Zimbabwe languages. So we will have doors open for that. That is good. That's just some of the few things that we going to be doing but we are welcoming ideas as well. Yeah, you heard that. So those are some of the ideas that you can come and do here at the Pan-African Community Center. So do not be afraid anymore here in Aotearoa. 
New Zealand. And oh yeah, your Facebook page and Instagram page. You have one. What yes. Is, what is the name? So Facebook page we go by Pan African Community Center. Mm. Website is Pan African Broadcasting Corporation. As you know, I'm a broadcaster, I'm a DJ on radio yeah. for a part for a international radio radio control, but we are also starting a, our own radio here through Pan African Broadcasting Corporation, wow. which is a charitable trust registered in New Zealand yeah. and is the one that's sponsoring the Pan African Community Center. So people need to see the link between those two. And then I also have a page called Advocate Kitty Nachivasa, and that's the page that kind of like matters all these other little things. Yeah. And do follow us. We are on Instagram as well as Advocate KC. Advocate, there's a reason why I'm called Advocate, mm -hmm. and you understand why as you go. Thank you. What is your address so people who don't know or who cannot follow Facebook or Instagram? <laughs> if you can't find us on Facebook, <laughs> yes. you can follow us in just if you are in New Zealand, 3131 Great North Road in New Lynn in Auckland at the Pan African Community Centre. If you punch Pan African Community Centre on Facebook, it comes up with the address. Mm. Yes. If Feel free to know. Anytime. Yeah, even in Google. Google, I yeah, think I put it I did. <laughs> yes. See, I didn't even check. <laughs> I did. There we go. That's awesome. So you yeah. are welcome to come here and uh, any questions, please feel free to contact us. Yes. And uh, happily have you here yeah 54 you. countries <laughs> over 2000 languages oh. i'm really excited about this me too me too are you please comment below thank you bye bye thank you so much <laughs> and here is a hole you can use so um there are also food products here at the pan-african community center Yep, so let's see what's being shown here. Oh, we have popcorn. <laughs> and we got ma mabele, something mabela. Uh, yeah. This is the one I cooked ugali with. For those ugali, some people call it pap, sadza. Yeah. <laughs> you know, porridge is a common staple food in Africa. So if you want sorghum porridge, mm -hmm. Yeah, come to the Pan African Community Center and they will also tell you where in um, Auckland you can find these products because these are just samples and yeah, for different businesses. This one is made from millet. Wow, who thought we could get sorghum and millet in Atara, New Zealand? Hey, and which one is this? Sam. <laughs> Sam, mm -hmm. which is made from maize. Yeah, the thing. What do we have here? Mm. Sun dried veggies. I don't know which country this is from. Munyemba. <laughs> if I'm not pronouncing it right, for those who know it, please do comment. Mm -hmm. We have Nyebe Yep. Yeah. For those who know which country this is from, please comment. And we have spices as well. Royko. Who knows Royko, East Africans? <laughs> but I think Royko is also popular in Southern Africa now. Oh, there's also roasted maize. Wow. You can come and um, give samples of your business work. Let's say you're doing jewelry, you can bring a piece of your jewelry here and with your business card and let's say you're doing art paintings you can bring your artwork one piece and with your business card or even hair extensions or whatever you're making you know whether you're even doing catering leave your business card here of course you cannot leave your food here <laughs> but let us promote each other in Aitaroa New Zealand yeah. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you need entertainers, those who can take drugs, come to Pan African Community Center and they will show you where you can find the business. We are the owner of Afronik, our lovely sister here started. Uh, jewelry and accessories business. Um, 
and her slogan for this um, her Afro Nick show goes where Africa and Atara mix. Oh, got I got it, it today. <laughs> Guys, I've been forgetting this, like <laughs> mixing up the words and finally I got it. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, I love, what, what do you sell? Before we go, I do and really like her jewelry, you know, you. really beautiful, handmade. So you do not need to go to Africa because we're Africa and Altera. Thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so I've been doing this for about three years now, just yeah. over three years. I um, started making jewelry. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I taught yeah. myself how to make something. Yeah. And uh, one friend would say, can you make me something? Another one said, can you make me something? And eventually I thought, hey, maybe let let this be a thing and so here we are now three years later we opened up our store last week so one year fresh in this location um, in New Lynn and um, yeah I really love making handmade things I think it's really important um, as a person of color as an African to um, you know I, I'm intellectual I've worked in the corporate world but also I think it's important to celebrate the arts and to um, you know be doing our things here as well to show that you know you can be successful as a creative and so yeah I love what I do I wouldn't swap for anything. So earrings, um, I make cushion covers, I make um, some digital art as well. Yeah. I've started a series um, of African proverbs. This is one of my favorites. Wow. It says when sleeping women wake, mountains move. And so yeah, um, get in touch with me. My Instagram is where I just Africa. Do you have a website? I do. Website yeah. is um, Afronique.com, so oh, nice and easy to remember. So come visit us, <laughs> 3131 yeah. Great North Road in Newland, right opposite the Bunny. Justin Zing, he's from Him 
was from China and he's now uh, my assistant, the uh, advisor. And then I have here Mariam, who is the ethnic liaison officer. She's from the Middle East. And then we have Constable Polycarpo Kapunitan. Uh, short name is Ding. And he, <laughs> he is from the Philippines. And also in, in the whole team, we have 17 people. So of different ethnicities. The police commissioner, I'm really happy to say a few things about a police commissioner. And I really like the African community to understand. And I thank you, Ben, for uh, sharing with us uh, some of the aspects how we police in New Zealand. Thank you so much for that uh, expression. Policing in New Zealand is all about engaging with people. And the commissioner has got one very strong uh, strategy and action points that he wants all the staff of New Zealand police to do. And that is to bring humanity with every interaction with everyone that we need. So this is, we are not about just arresting, arresting, no. We want to work with you. How can we work with you? So then we talk about supporting each other and working with each other. Now you have a center here, and I'd like to share with you, same with some of the community leaders here. Here's a community center, and we've got Katina. And then uh, we've got uh, community leaders like... Uh, <laughs> I've started sweating. Palms are already sweaty. <laughs> now, I mean, yeah. But what that, I'm, from, I'm actually from South Africa. Right? So I'm, I'm not... Shush. <laughs> Where do I even start? Kiara Kotakato. I would like to acknowledge the Tag de Finua who is here that have acknowledged us on this land, bringing us into this building as well. I also would like to thank Ben, Katina, Gurdipai over here, Jessica. I work very closely with these community leaders and the police as well. And with that, over time, you know, it's strengthened the bonds of relationships, friendships, networks and it opens up doors to various uh, networks out there. And on behalf of the Pakistan Association of New Zealand, that is, uh, I'm representing unfortunately, not only one, I would like to thank PABC for a great achievement, a great accomplishment, not only for the African community, but it's open to everybody. You can host various activities over here for the young, for the older, and for various other, you know, fun activities to come along. So we wish you all the best on this community center, the growth, the establishment, the future of it. And also the gentleman over there from Wellington mentioned a lot of history about South Africa and New Zealand. And that also touches, you know, being from South Africa, it touches a lot in history. When you truly understand what was brought forward and what was sacrificed, it means a lot. Now I'm going to stop here, but thank you very much. I'm going to introduce our next speaker. Thank you all so much. I'll acknowledge all the leaders who are here. If we didn't give you the opportunity to speak, no offense. We're going to host many other events, I promise you, but we really want to cut this short. I'm going to introduce, uh, we actually call this man one of the most influential, most experienced. He's been here the longest in New Zealand. He's been here since 1992. One of 1992. That's a long time. I don't even remember how young I was, but we want to, to introduce Mr. Thomas Banda. He came all the way from Wellington, and as it happens, so many leaders here they know him because he supports nearly everybody. And we just we are so humble to have him as part of our, you know, our advisory board. And that's why this center is the way it is because we have people like him. So hey. Careful who you bring into your business. Thank you, uh, Thomas. I'm just going to give you the honor. I'm, I'm going to yield the mic to you. Thank you, Katina. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, boys and girls. Uh, I'm actually lost for words, I should say. And the, if you've noticed, looking at the program, it seems to have been bumped up on the as. Ben said to me, you had five minutes to speak, but now you could probably take a bit longer. <laughs> but I, I, I should actually reassure you that's not my intention 
uh, to do so. Uh, in the first instance, again, I just want to acknowledge the Tanita Fenwa here for the welcome to this premises here. This is a very emotional and a quite uh, moving experience to be part of the launch of the Africa Community Center in New Zealand. I think it's one of the first of its kind in New Zealand. I came here in 1992 and the seemingly looking Asian now. And when I came here, I was in my late 20s. And uh, when I first arrived here, there was an African center, but it was actually called the African Information Center in Wellington Cotton Place. That center's objective was totally different from what you're witnessing here. At that point in time, for you who followed the history between New Zealand and the, the African continent, there was some kind of tension, hostility going on by some African countries, particularly with the role that New Zealand was playing in maintaining contact with South Africa when our brothers and sisters on the continent were going through apartheid. And uh, that made New Zealand a bit unpopular within the Commonwealth. And at that stage, I think with the foresight of some of the politicians, I think even with the fourth Labour government, they saw some sense of reason to try and raise some awareness that there was much more to be offered on the African continent than just maintaining contact with South Africa playing rugby. And a lot of our leaders at that point in time uh, could remember the likes of Kenneth Kaunda, Julius Nyerere, believed that without the independence of South Africa, Namibia was big. The rest of the continent was not free. And they despised any other country that was maintaining contact with the South Africa when they were pushing for sanctions. So this is the context of me explaining that we did have an African Information Center, but that center did not cut it for the grassroots Africans here in New Zealand. It was just there to dispense information on behalf of the New Zealand government and particularly doing some damage control. And that was witnessed by, if those who've been here long enough will probably been able to hear about the anti-Springbok riots that took place in New Zealand had quite divided the country for those who supported the ongoing links with the New Zealand and South Africa, particularly with rugby, and those New Zealand who stood up and supported the African leaders in terms of trying to isolate South Africa. So that's a context of what makes me so emotional to come here and witness the opening of the first African community center. We are not here to celebrate an opening of a building. We are here celebrating the realization of a dream. And I would like to congratulate Ben Katina for making that a reality. And for me, I feel, as other speakers have pointed out, this is a, a home away from home. This is a, a home where we can feel comfortable to share our stories from where we come from, through the journeys that we've traveled. It could be, and I have experiences of working with community groups, particularly in Wellington, it could be very challenging living in diaspora, being far away removed from your own close family members, but you can find family here in New Zealand. And this is what the center is trying to do. It's a center that's trying to create an environment where you can feel safe, feel energized when you come here, feel you've got brothers and sisters that share the same stories, the same journey that you've traveled. And I also hope that you also realize that having a center like that in New Zealand can be a challenge itself. It does rely on resources to get it sustained, and this, in my view, one of the things that challenge a lot of ethnic communities when they come to New Zealand. But I strongly believe that from what I've seen and observed, particularly with the energy that has come in from Katina, Ben, and their vision to ensure that this is sustained, I see the hope that somehow 
with the spirit of commitment, we can both or make all work this in a way that we just sustain this dream. It's in the early stages, but I see the center as a baby. And in Africa, they say it takes about the whole village to raise a baby. Mm -hmm. So each one of us who come here in supporting the center, I hope that you can in some form or shape play a role in supporting this center. It's relying on few resources and we're hoping that we can rely on your time and your voluntary time that you have. I would like as you go away to think wisely on how you can help support the center in the future. I know we'll ask for you if you've got a few hours in a week, in a month, and you feel you can just drop in. I would like to have it at a drop-in center where you can just share your skills that you have, either in IT, marketing, or whatever. There'll be somebody here you can talk to. So that's how we'd like to see the support coming from the community. Like I said, I was reluctant in taking up the stage to speak because I can go on, but I realize that we are getting to a point whereby the catering there is getting ready, and I also want to ensure that you experience the African cuisine as well, and there's a lot of effort that has gone in. In so doing, I also like, uh, on behalf of uh, the Trust, Ben and the Katina, to extend a very special welcome to you all from an African perspective. And I also want to reassure you that this is your center. This is your home. This is your Ikaya. This is a home away from home. It is a small center, small steps. And like I said, you can contribute and play a very fundamental part in ensuring that the success of the center is sustained. Don't think you're small in terms of the scale of what you can contribute. And for those who, I think, uh, like me, try and keep in tune with the African culture, try and kind of tap into the proverbs in Africa. And there's one which I think fits in very well here when we talk about Katina from time to time telling me that I'm just a tiny little woman. And I've got all this undertaking to make this succeed. Katina actually to assure you that there is a proverb in Africa, some of you might have heard it, and uh, it goes like this. It said, if you think you're too small to make a difference, then you've never been in bed with a mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> and that just sums up the fact that, yes, you can be small and you can have limited resources, but you could make a difference when you've got the vision and the spirit to achieve your dreams. On that note, I'd like to say thank you so much for coming to join us, and I hope you continue joining us and enjoy your, the rest of the afternoon with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're just going to raise up a from uh, African communities here in New Lynn. So I think it, uh, the ones I could actually remember, because there's been quite a few, there was a Congolese one and a Burundian one and a Rwandan one and a Zimbabwe one recently. Mm -hmm. And I've been at others. And I've really enjoyed them. But something that's really struck me is, is the need for a home for the African communities. And this community centre creates it. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about today. The second thing I want to talk about is my lovely colleague, Ibrahim Omer. Um, he, is, he was very sorry not to get here. He, he was calling me today and saying what in New Zealand had done. But Ibrahim is an African, and he's a refugee, and he's a member of the Parliament of New Zealand. And that's fantastic. It brings that kind of voice into our Parliament and into our highest levels of government. And I hope that some of you will con consider getting involved in politics, maybe at the local level, maybe at the national level, but we need all the diverse voices we can possibly get in our parliament. There's a couple of other things I want to reflect on. Um, one is the extent to which we have uh, now, at long last, have acknowledged Māori as the tangata whenua of New Zealand, and that we are finally trying to do things better. 
Māori signed the Treaty of Waitangi back in about 1840, and of course, Pākehā, or colonial New Zealand, promptly walked away from it. And Māori have talked and talked and talked and negotiated ever since to get justice. And I want to pick up on that and think of the word uh, that talking, the holding of the hui and the holding of the meetings. It takes a long time and it takes a lot of talking, but that's the way we do things in New Zealand. Um, and it's, you know, it can take an awful lot of effort, but I invite you all to use this place as a place to do the talking and to do the getting to know each other and to do the finding of a new way to live. That's the next point I want to bring to. This is Aotearoa, the Māori name for New Zealand, but it's also New Zealand and it's New Lynn. We do things in a new way here. <laughs> As in, that's a new and a fresh way, so I really want to have that be the thought too, that we do things in a new way, and I really hope that will be part of it. I'm going to hark back to something here. Today we sang the national anthem in, in Te Reo, in Māori. When I grew up, we didn't do that, right? Uh, my daughters learned it automatically at school. They said, no, of course we sing it in Te Reo. My husband and I had to make a conscious effort to learn it. These days when there's a big rugby match at, at, Glen e at um, Mount Eden or something like that, the whole crowd stands up and sings it in Rio. Right? At the Commonwealth Games recently, when our athletes could only have one verse of the national anthem, lots of them chose a Rio verse. That's new in New Zealand, and it's something that has happened in the last quarter of a century or so. We can do new things and we can do them better. And um, it's part of the and it's, it's part of the richness that has been brought to us by Māori and by the many cultures who have, people who have come here and brought their cultures and brought their richness to New Zealand. And so that is the note I want to end on. I want to thank the people who have worked so hard to get this centre up and going. So you know, Ben, Katina, Thomas, the people who have worked to make it happen. I want to acknowledge and thank our police team here, um, especially Jessica, but the whole team here who work so hard to ensure that people coming new into New Zealand really understand what New Zealand is all about. Um, and to me, New Zealand is a hopeful and new place, and so is New Lynn. It's one of the most diverse um, electorates in the country. There's an incredible number of different groups, different languages, different communities here but we're all doing something new together, and that's why I'm so proud to be the MP for New Lynn. And I am thrilled that this centre is located in the heart of my electorate. So, no reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou koutou. Nga tēnā. Oi, no. This one here, it will remind you of Africa, I promise you. I always have something to surprise you. Okay. <laughs> thank you, darling. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, we are honored to be a part of this. I'll tell you something that you probably didn't know. I came to visit your office a few months ago, and um, I got told that, Katina, you said you are coming to New Lynn. I said, yes. They said, which side of the street are you on? Then I said, hang on. I'm on this side. Yes! <laughs> As it happens, something you didn't know about Union. If this office was just across the road, I'll be, or we would be, in another electronic. So thank you for having us. Yeah. <laughs> Do not forget to subscribe and share this video.